their final standing in the conference. Notre Dame wearing the green tonight on the road against number one Florida State in white. So let's love the game from Tallahassee, Florida. What a great ACC women's soccer matchup you get tonight. Turnover, Maddie Mercado, one of the key players you mentioned in that attack, Lori Meg Merwicki, number 16, a freshman who is really taking that starting spot. Ball harmlessly out of bounds though for that first foray up the field for the Irish. Christina Roque walking the ball up, wearing that turquoise color in goal. This is the Seminole Heritage game for the Seminoles. They all had the turquoise warm-ups on, and you might have noticed men's basketball. They've been doing this for a while where they wear the turquoise. It's to honor the connection that Florida State has with the Seminole tribe here in the state of Florida. A little push. Crowd didn't like it, but the reigning ACC Defensive Player of the Year saying hello to the freshman, Jordan Dudley. Ava Catino doing the defending for Notre Dame. Yeah, and you would love to hear the crowd get involved early on in this game, and I, I think we'll hear them the majority as well as both teams already in just the opening minute or so looking to be direct, looking to get into the attack quickly. And as much as both of these teams want to showcase what they can do defensively, I think we're going to see the high-powered high offenses really get after this game tonight. Yeah, we had a chance to speak with both coaches earlier today and I think these two teams are the quality you would expect that their rankings would signify they can do a number of things with the ball in possession but they can also come at you and in these opening minutes in particular we expect to see that there's Gilchrist mentioned she returns to the back line the sophomore who was a member of the ACC all freshman team last year she and Lauren Flynn, the two center backs for the Seminoles, in this four back. They have played with their formation a little bit as the season has gone along. Ron Y, the ACC Defensive Player of the Week, turns it over. Kiki Van Zanten, it's a special game for the Van Zanten family. Kiki, head over the heels on the end line, but earning a corner kick for her team right off the bat. Well, really good challenge for EY just to go to ground, make that challenge because quickly you see Van Zanten, as soon as she gets on the ball, driving, has one thing in mind to go to goal. We're gonna see that from both teams. It does look like Mercado on that far side is the one that's standing over it. Oh, excuse me, it's Roy. Now the freshman Morgan Roy. Left the delivery a little short. It was cleared initially by Florida State. Ball not clear yet, though. Now Echigini helps it up the field. Beata Olsen is moved from that central position where we're used to seeing her. You may see her pop up there at times, but starting in a more outer position to give some width and give the freshman Jordan Dudley a chance to be closer to goal where she's been so <laughs> lethal. Another turnover. Van Zanten, the beneficiary, lays it off beautifully, but it goes away from the rest of the Notre Dame players. And that's a couple times, Lori, that Florida State has turned it over in their own half here, and Notre Dame yet to make them pay. Well, that was something that Brian Pinsky, the head coach of Florida State, spoke to us about, is being better with the build out of the back, making sure they connect their passes. And that's something that Notre Dame will want to keep an eye on, because as soon as it's turned over, they've also given the ball directly back to Florida State. So if it's a gift higher up the field, they'll want to do more with it, especially in how tight this game we expect it to be. 3-3 was the score in the ACC semifinal. The last time these two teams met, Florida State eventually advancing on penalties. Good composure on the ball there from Taylor Huff. Well, just an easy giveaway from Olsen, and you could see the reaction wasn't happy with that giveaway. But what I do think is interesting right now for Florida State is at times they are looking like a 4-2-4 pushing Huff higher up onto the back line at times. And that's going to have Notre Dame decide whether or not they're going to push their wing backs back and help out defensively. How do they adjust to that? 
offside the call here. And I, I mentioned it was a special night for Kiki Van Zandt. And this is a family thing, all right? This is the whole family at Special Four because Kiki plays for Notre Dame. Her younger sister Mimi is a freshman for Florida State. And this family, let me tell you, they're prepared. You saw mom there, Priscilla with the split shirt sharing both of her loyalties and wearing them proudly on her chest. We'll give you another look at the haberdashery that went into the family planning for the Van Zants for this game at halftime. Sophia Wynn on this right side of the Seminole defense. Up to Huff, transfer from Tennessee, who's been so good stepping in this year for Florida State. A Jagini stopped, edge of the area. Well, and look how many players right now Notre Dame has back behind the ball, tough for them to build out. And that goes back to my previous point is when Florida State does push numbers higher, particularly Huff out of the midfield, how does Notre Dame deal with that defensively? They're gonna have to drop players back starting in that three back position. Huff, edge of the box, opted not to unleash a shot. Edgigini lays it again, Dudley over to Brown. Nesbeth. One of the leaders in the midfield for this Florida State team. Wynn serves it up. The left footed shot from Huff is blocked, but look at all of those weapons just calling out those names. Echigini and Brown and Dudley. What a freshman year she's having. Huff too, right in the mix of everything. Four goals, seven assists on the season for Taylor Huff. Olsen will make a run for this one. But Gatino takes care of business. Does put it out of bounds though for a Seminole throw. Well, and already we're seeing Florida State having to be patient in the buildup because immediately Notre Dame gets numbers back behind the ball, trying to make it predictable for themselves. And that's where the patience comes in, moving it side to side, switching the point of attack for Florida State, but finding the right tempo, not to rush it, but find those moments when they can attack quickly as well. Big ball over the top, intercepted by Notre Dame. You see quality across the ACC, but the caliber of player in this matchup in particular, when you get to the top teams fighting for supremacy in this conference, you're seeing world-class talent. And Kiki Van Zant and Jody Brown were teammates with Jamaica at the World Cup. Joe Echigini was with Nigeria, Dudley, can she keep this in play? She will. Cuts it back. All the freshmen playing with so much confidence. And she can Florida State. And the Seminole strike first. Well, you felt it coming. It was just a matter of time. First 10 minutes. Creating the tempo, pushing the pace. Front footed for Florida State here at home and then found the, the right amount of patience, and then Dudley just showcasing her class inside the six yard box, wiggling her way through traffic right here, and then just the presence of mind to lay it off to Echigini, who does what she does best, this clinical in front of goal, first time finish through traffic, past Olofsson to make it 1-0. Seventh goal of the season for Echigini, but hadn't scored in the last four, so. She gets back in the scoring column. And what a start this is, finding those moments, a few giveaways that you mentioned deep in their own half to start this game, but not enough in the way of punishing them for Notre Dame and then gain control of the ball, moving it side to side, getting the players that you want, those front runners for Florida State on the ball and then Dudley just pouncing on that loose ball, working her way through traffic and We've seen that all season long from the freshmen. Yeah, Just, she's been so impressive, hasn't she? Yep. And it's one of the reasons why we're seeing her in that center forward position to get her closer to goal, allow Olsen to get more faced up on this right-hand side. And then Dudley just looking to wait for those opportunities inside the 18-yard box to pounce on.
chance to move forward for Meg Mrolwicki. Has the ball at her feet for Notre Dame. Taps it out wide. Morgan Roy. It's been good in wide spaces for Notre Dame. One of the adjustments that they have made this season as it's gone along. Just one loss overall for the Irish. None in conference play. Not the start that they would want away from home, conceding this early, but also you'd have to imagine now just allows them to settle in and play their game with how much is on the line. Know that they want to get a result. At Jagini and Dudley looking to link up again. Here comes the fine freshman for Florida State. Dudley with it on the right, but it is right <laughs> at the goalkeeper, Atley Olofsson. And she's always a threat because it could be against the run of play. And it's just one ball over the top. She makes something out of it, even if it's not to her feet. And then she has players chasing her. And that's something that Notre Dame's gonna have to be mindful of when they start to push more players forward because she will get on the end of it and then she will run at the back line and have only one thing on her mind. And here's that last play doing what she can, just rounds the corner, gets past the opposition, trying to get her head up, doesn't see any of her teammates and says, fine, I'll go myself. <laughs> Good choice. And I remember talking to Brian Penske early in the season and he was telling me about Jordan Dudley, this freshman who he said, she is so impressive. I just have been telling her to impose her will. Don't defer because you're coming in as a freshman. We want you to take it to your opponents and it might have taken her a couple games for that message to sink in, but that's what she's doing. This is Jody Brown down now after that collision. Yeah, so just a late challenge in the end. You can see Brown trying to get out of it, release the ball. But to your point, I think when you look at this Florida State team, one of the reasons why they're in the position they are in is because of Dudley and Huff. Those are the two difference makers when you think about players that have left the program, Nyswang or Robbins in particular, two of their leaders from last season played significant roles, go off to play in the NWSL. Then you bring in these two players and they give you a different look. They give you a threat to go in behind, but you can also keep possession, play through them. And my goodness, Dudley has been so impressive throughout her freshman year so far. Brown gets it over to win. Manaya Hudson has the space covered for Notre Dame. Every touch from the Seminoles, except for that one, I just about jinxed Ron EY, just seemingly so confident. Well, and this is the challenge because you can't see it in your screen right now, but prior to that turnover, five backs for Notre Dame. So now you only have one attacker going forward, and that's something that Notre Dame isn't particularly used to. Advantage will play here for the Irish going forward. Up into the box, left-footed ball. Does not make it all the way across. Leah Klink is so lethal from this left-hand side for Notre Dame. And she's gonna have to put in the miles tonight, getting up and down this left-hand side, defensively working back to make sure she covers, but also in these moments right here. Tops in the ACC in assists. No one to connect with this time though as Christina Roque snatches it out of the year, the reigning ACC Goalkeeper of the Year and All-American last year for the Seminoles in goal. Olsen, just in the nick of time, gets it away to Brown. Echeguini and Brown. Nate Norman called this attacking group for Florida State the best in the country. And I think you're seeing exactly what he has been seeing as he's been preparing for this match. <laughs> well, we're seeing the versatility as well. Just on that last play, you see Edugini drop from the top line back into the midfield to give them a numerical advantage. And that's something that Notre Dame's gonna have to be mindful of is how can they get a hold of the ball, particularly in those central areas. Right now, Mercado, Van Zanten, two players that we talked about coming into this game, haven't been able to get on and affect the game enough. And a lot of that has to do with the movement of those front five for Florida State. Possession largely in favor of the home team Seminoles so far in this one tonight. And that 
that's something Nate Norman, head coach for Notre Dame, told us earlier. When you win it against Florida State, you have to be brave enough to keep it, force them to defend you. Right now, it's the Irish doing a lot of defending. And to your point, they take it over now, and there is one player in a green jersey even near midfield. No support, and then Lynch immediately turns it back over to Florida State. Olsen. And these are moments right here, Jen, where Notre Dame's gonna have to figure out ways to gain some territorial advantage. Draw, as soon as this ball's played back, can they get higher up? And right now you see how slow they are to come out of that deep defensive shape. Just allows for Florida State to be able to keep the ball. And the challenge will be on Florida State to hunt for that second goal to really try to put this game out of reach in this first 45 minutes. Reminder that in the regular season last year, Notre Dame really took it to Florida State when they played in South Bend. It was a 4 nothing win for the Irish. They scored two goals in the first 10 minutes in that one, and then the Seminoles exacting their revenge in that goal-filled semifinal in Cary, North Carolina. 3-3, but then PKs to Florida State as they went on to the championship and went on to win the ACC title. Sophia Wynn will come up to take the throw. Started nine games a year ago in her freshman year. Every game so far this season. Yeah. Dudley. Nesbeth fights her way onto the ball. Irish and Roy looking for a way forward. Mercado picks it up deep. Clinky starting to make her run. That's where the ball goes. Did skim off the head of Sophia Wynn. So Corey Rockwell, our referee, alerting everyone to Notre Dame possession here on the throw. And that's where Mercado can affect this game at times, just dropping a bit deeper to get on it and then looking to see if she can connect those passes or find Clinky over the top. Renaya Hudson, nice long throw into the box. Now it's out. And it's goal kick. And for as little as they've had the ball in Notre Dame, they still look dangerous once they get into the final third. And that's where Florida State has to be mindful. Don't turn off. Make sure they stay touch tight once that ball is served in because Clinky on the left, Roy on the right, thoughtful with their service. You're going to have Ospec that's going to make her way on as a substitute eventually for Notre Dame. So you have these players that once they get on the ball, they can be dangerous, whether it's through assist or finding the back of the net themselves. So continuing to hunt for another goal for Florida State here at home is going to be vital. Yeah, you get the feeling in this matchup, one goal is not going to make anyone <laughs> feel very comfortable. <laughs> yeah, no, come on. We tease this. Look, these are the top two scoring teams in conference play in the ACC. We couldn't believe the 3-3 match in the ACC Ooh. semifinal last year. We were well, loving it. It was quite the contrast from the other semifinal. <laughs> North Carolina and Duke, 0-0, zero, zero, also went to penalties. That's just around the corner, by the way. Hard to believe that we are, what, three weeks away from the ACC championship, Cary, North Carolina. Looks like our first set of subs getting ready, and there are your dates to keep an eye on. That first round played at campus sites. Remember, the top six teams will make the ACC championship, and then we'll have the semifinals and the championship coming up to start off November from Cary, North Carolina. No subs on the field yet, so same starting 11 for both teams still out there. 
Joe Echigini. Scoring for the Seminoles in the eighth minute of this match gives Florida State the one goal advantage. And Mercado just forced back the opposite direction, Gatino. Well, great pressure from Huff in particular for Florida State, just driving Mercado back. And this is a Notre Dame team that will be used to having a bit more time in those central areas. So the support has to come quicker. The angles to be able to release the ball a bit quicker than we've seen from Notre Dame then push those wing backs higher up the field in those wide areas. And these are two teams who have been pushed to this point this season. They both have had matches where they have trailed and had to come back. They have enough experience and composure to not panic in those situations. And I think that's even more impressive for this Notre Dame team that typically starts four or five freshmen. Hudson. Big throw, such a good weapon. The follow-up shot, Roque has to come out and collect it. Well, just look at the positioning of Flynn defensively. Gets herself in between the attacker for Notre Dame. As soon as this ball is played and there's a little bit of defection for Roque to come out, you see the positioning of Flynn. Excellent to not allow them to get a touch on it. And that's exactly what Florida State will be looking for defensively to make sure they don't concede a goal in this game. And these are the moments Notre Dame is looking for. To pounce and press, it's going to be a part of what Notre Dame does. And they're able to at least cause a few problems here and now give Hudson another chance on the throw. And she's created, honestly, some of the best opportunities so far. Claire Logan and Morgan Roy, two freshmen who have been starting fairly regularly here for the Irish this season. BY, not the touch she wanted. And it's back to the Irish, but not for long. Jody Brown there to help defensively. Now turn on the Jets, Echigini, Olsen calling for it. Yada Olsen, one touch, looking for Dudley. That looked like a late foul, but Corey Rockwell is right there on top of the play. He immediately said, ah, uh -uh. there looked like there was contact on Dudley after the ball had passed her by, but he had a much better view of it than we did initially. Let's see. Yeah, and it, it doesn't look like there's much and I think Corey Rockwell is exactly right. I mean, there's a little bit of touch, but just the momentum of both players trying to round the corner. Good no call initially, but how quickly Florida State can get into the attack. There'd been moments of them having to defend, trying to build out of the back, and then immediately Huff wins the ball and they've got numbers going. It's a really smart ball from Olsen on this near side to play it first time into the path of Dudley. Great build up, great transitional moment for Florida State. Huff on it now, looking to get in line and earn a corner kick. First of the match coming up for Florida State. Set pieces always have that potential to be game changing moments. You've been saying Florida State looking to add to that lead. Can they do it here from the corner? and the freshman Olofsson in goal for Notre Dame. Well, and Dudley Echigini will be the targets. Don't get a chance on the first ball anyway. Good skill there from Laney Matriano. A little bump from Jody Brown, enough to warrant the whistle. But this is good from Notre Dame, just to get the ball down quickly, start to play, gain some confidence in this game. Good step in. Rowicki has Olsen on her back. Lynch in the middle, and it is intercepted by Wynn. Seminoles coming off three straight shutouts.
defensively. Tough team to break down. Yeah, they certainly are. And that's one of the things that we said coming into this game, Jen, was how were each team going to react defensively to the threats that were going to be thrown at them. And already the Seminoles doing a good job on that last play. That's Olsen. That is your right forward tracking back, doubling back to be able to make their life predictable. Dudley up the middle. Oh, what a save. Freshman v. Freshman and Olofsson up to the challenge. Well, good reactive save from Olofsson just to get down quickly because once again, Ol excuse me, Dudley in that central area just creating problems with her movement inside the 18-yard box. Doesn't get great hold of that final ball. Clinky now with it for Notre Dame. Couple of step overs, takes it herself. Maybe looking to connect on that far post but nobody home. <laughs> well, 25 minutes in, and now you start to feel that this game could start to open up a bit more into in action. Notre Dame going to start to push numbers forward. Opportunity at one end, and then at the other with Klinky trying to serve that ball into the box as we're going to see Ospec make her way in. And what a substitution this is. I mean, this is a player who no question could be starting. She's primarily come off the bench the last few seasons for Notre Dame, but she's the reigning ACC Offensive Player of the Week, and she just brings something differently to this front line, doesn't she? Well, in terms of hold-up play as well, because she can play on that right side as well, but we do see Roy taking players on, going 1v1. But Ospec will be able to hold up play, allow for others to join in to the attack. Could be an uh, important piece with her physicality, especially the way that this game has gone and just that final pass for Notre Dame. One goal, five assists in the last two games for Ellie Ospec, including a career high three assists in the last match which was just a pummeling, a 7-2 win for the Irish against Miami. Little Flick saw the idea of what Brown was trying to do. Deeper and deeper go the Irish defensively. Winds up in a turnover. Nesbeth spins it around. Dudley so good with the touch. Brown left it behind. Oh, excellent build-up play and just combination right on top of the 18-yard box. Just gets stuck underneath Brown's foot. How many times do you hear coaches or even analysts talk about needing to play faster, needing to be quicker with your touches. Well, Florida State is putting on a clinic in the offensive third of how to do just that. <laughs> yeah, they are. And this time it starts with Nesbeth and the, the positioning behind the ball to regain possession, to allow players to be in close quarters like we just saw with the combination play is because of Nesbeth. Just presence of mind to wiggle her way out of that pressure, look to feather that pass in. And unfortunately for Brown, just get stuck underneath her foot, but right idea. And that's how you're going to break down this Notre Dame team. Need to make sure they don't narrow the field too much though. Can they stay wide? Can they pull out Notre Dame defensively and horizontally as well as vertically? Shots four to two in favor of the Seminoles so far in this one. Their one goal coming in the eighth minute. Florida State looking to attack. Kiki Van Zanten did all she could to disrupt the play, but the Seminoles keep their composure. EY, Echeguini, across for Olsen. Well, this is the versatility in the way that Florida State can attack. They have the threat down the central areas. They have the wide players getting forward. At times, that's EY or Win. they're outside backs. Olsen pinching in. We mentioned her being more of a center forward that's playing in that wide right position. Just so many threats 
I think the one thing that Brian Pinsky would be disappointed with so far in this first half, if there is one, is this they haven't found the back of the net more than just once because they've had the possession, they're creating the opportunities, but you have to put teams away because Notre Dame will continue to hunt, they'll continue to, to fight. And as this game wears on, you would imagine they're going to start to build in confidence knowing that they've only conceded one time so far, even though they've had to defend a lot of this game. Florida State is a team that has grown into its matches this season, too. They've been very productive, outscoring their opponents 25 to 3 in the second half of games. Clinky, you know she wants it on the left, headed down and in! Notre Dame levels it with the former Seminole doing the damage, Christina Lynch putting it away. Well, there it is. And we talk so much about the threats of Florida State. Well, the same with Notre Dame. Clinky on this left-hand side, getting more and more on the ball. No real pressure initially. And then look how wide open Lynch is. That is a player that you cannot leave open inside the six yard box as times a run, perfectly splits the two defenders and then does exactly what she needs to do hit it into the ground, difficult for Okay to be able to move her feet, get over, but you see that bounce. And that bounce with the power behind that header from Lynch is what gets past Roque in the end. And what an equalizer away from home that is for Notre Dame. Come on, you know that has to feel good. A great career for Christina Lynch. She won two NCAA championships while she was with Florida State, was a grad transfer. Actually, last year should have been her first year with the Irish, but she was injured and so wound up redshirting. Now getting a chance to get on the field this year on her first trip back to Tallahassee, making it count. Well, especially against the run of play, really. Haven't had a lot of the ball, especially in the first 15 minutes or so, defending deep in their own half. Didn't have a lot in the way of attack at all, but as this game's worn on, in particular have gotten Clinky involved in this game, serving balls in, and then now the runners are coming. Charlie Codd came on in place. <laughs> As the shot is quickly <laughs> unleashed, you get one, you look for another. Kiki Van Zanten doing the honors. Lynch going off after that goal is what I was trying to get out there, and Charlie Codd coming on in her place in the attack. Anyone watching this match, and this is, I think, one of the reasons you, you love this game, would tell you Florida State is dominated. But they only had the one goal to show for it, as you said, Lori, and then maybe a little lackadaisical defensively to allow that service from the ACC's leader in assists. And Clinky added one to her total now with nine, finding Lynch open in the box. Well, I think it's these types of games, Jens, where you, where you start to find out a lot about your team on both sides of the ball. Defensively was one of the points that was highlighted as we're going to see Osbeck driving into the box. Osbeck keeps it alive, and the Irish nearly had another. The two substitutes connecting. I'm just a bit nervy defensively right now for Florida State, and that's one of the areas that Brian Pinsky wanted to find out about his team, knowing that there's going to be players thrown at them, transitional moments, but also Notre Dame being able to keep possession, the wide areas being a concern at times, but certainly will be disappointed in some of the marking in the box, especially when there is an initial pressure on the service. Foul against Dudley and Florida State. Clinky has been able to play higher up the field. Only had two assists all of last season and all ACC freshman campaign for Clinky. But she's had the opportunity to get forward more. Boy, has it paid off this season for the Irish. Here she is again. Clinky. Wynn has her hands full. 
Well, right now, if I'm Nate Norman, I'm telling my players to get Clinky the ball every single attack. She's causing so many problems, driving win back defensively for Florida State. Sophia Fisher, you feel the momentum shift. Another shot as now Notre Dame out shooting Florida State in this first half. Well, next week, we have a huge women's soccer doubleheader for you here on ACC Network. We'll start things off with Boston College and Wake Forest at 6 Eastern. And then, Lori, we're headed to Chapel Hill to see the Fighting Irish take on the Tar Heels. Join us next week right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Now, this is the teeth of the Notre Dame schedule right now. The Irish can come through these two unscathed. Florida State tonight and then at North Carolina next Thursday. I think you're looking at the ACC regular season champion, but that's a big if. I think those three teams have separated themselves thus far and Clemson Tigers also in the top 10 playing really well. Excited to see them on our air over the next few weeks. And of course they're on Notre Dame's schedule as well. Florida State, Notre Dame atop the ACC at the moment. Three teams unbeaten in conference play. The three I just talked about with the Tar Heels also sitting just below those two after conceding a late goal to the Duke Blue Devils last Sunday. Wound up with a tie, so that puts them points-wise a couple of points behind the Seminoles and the Irish. North Carolina was number one in the nation. Florida State takes over that spot this week. Seminoles unbeaten at home when they have been the number one ranked team. 27 and 0 all time. Tough to get the ball clear as that Seminole pressure keeps on coming. And now it pays off for Florida State. This is just outside the area, right? And the yellow card comes out. Well, it's a good battle initially. And just look at Olsen <laughs> getting herself in. And yeah, that's a yellow card on, on Hudson, just wrapping her arms around Olsen. But the positioning from the front runner for Florida State, Olsen, does such a good job just to pounce on it quickly. And now this could be a dangerous free kick, always difficult in these central areas to try to get it up and over the wall. So we're gonna see Nesbeth and Huff standing over this one. Corey Rockwell will back the line up. The allotted space. And now let's see what Leilani Nesbeth or perhaps Taylor Huff opt to do with this. Nesbitt going for Whoa. goal, hits the crossbar, tries it again, and it's out of bounds. She shows her <laughs> frustration, we yep. understand. Yeah, and their reaction, you can hear it just deflect off the, the crossbar, and what a strike that is. And, and that's what I'm talking about in terms of it's difficult in those central areas, how close it is to get it up and over with the pace and the bend. She does so well and just unfortunate to not be able to sneak that one in. Great opportunity for the Seminoles. Nesbeth being one of those players, we talked about Huff and Dudley coming in, but my goodness, has Nesbeth been the anchor in the midfield for the Seminoles, really allows those front runners to be able to do the business that they do because of her positioning and case in point right there, wins the ball back, regains possession, and now they can get numbers going forward. Olsen and now Dudley with it for Florida State. Echeguini zigzagging across, Brown making the run. Roy all the way back to her own end line. You talk about those wing backs and how much running they have to do and how deep or high they are on the field. Look how deep she's had to come here defensively for Notre Dame. Florida State has had three subs waiting to check in. Seems like about 10 minutes over there. 
Haven't had the opportunity yet. Huff. Win. Puts it up. Dudley can't connect to it. And now those subs. Nope. I thought well, I it was four. They feel like ball, it's been ten minutes as well. <laughs> I was thinking it was going to be a chance to come in, but it's a Notre Dame throw, so not so fast. Florida State taking the lead in the eighth minute of this one. Notre Dame coming back to tie it in the 29th, and it is anyone's game at this point, as we expected coming into this matchup tonight. Florida State leads the series overall, but last year, Notre Dame getting the win in the regular season. Florida State advancing on penalty kicks in the ACC tournament. sent forward. Those defenders for Florida State not afraid to bring the ball down, try to get a pass off rather than just booting it away initially. Wrong piece of the puzzle there. Didn't quite fit for Notre Dame as it goes out of bounds. And now those subs will come in. See Maria Alagoa will replace Dudley up top and Mimi Van Zanten coming into the match. I know. There they are. They're right in front of us. Mom, <laughs> sure in that shirt that she specially made herself for both of her daughters. And what a freshman year that Mimi Van Zanten has had for Florida State, by the way. Nothing bigger than that game tying goal at number one, North Carolina, with seven seconds remaining. She's also started the last two matches. Nesbitt all over the field for Florida State. Of course, as Mimi came into the game, Kiki went off. Aaron Honstein on in her place for Notre Dame. Come on, that kind of spoils the storyline, guys. We'll get sister v. sister at some point. <laughs> You talked about the congestion centrally earlier, Lori. You could see all the bodies there for Florida State, just nowhere to go. No, and that's where I think both teams, not just Florida State, can be a bit better with their decision-making in the final third. If it's not on to go quickly, just connect your passes, get numbers higher up the field. And for Florida State in particular, can Olsen now off the field, but can they stay wider, those outside forwards? Can they provide the width to stretch out Notre Dame defensively? Just better decision making once they get into these areas. Etchagini stayed out there. The other attacking players around her, fresh for the most part. There's a shot and a save. That was Maria Alagoa. Saturday at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, we'll have a command center presentation of Syracuse and number four Florida State, giving you a little bit of a different look there. Then Virginia Tech hosting Wake Forest and at 8 Eastern, that is kept off by our ACCN primetime matchup number 17 Duke hosting Brennan Armstrong and NC State in Durham. Coming the other way, two defenders there for Florida State. Was there tugging on the jersey? Notre Dame certainly thinks so. Well, I think Osbeck also thought it was a back pass. There's the physicality from Osbeck. One ball over the top, and she's looking to get beyond. Well done defensively for Florida State to do what they can just to put her off balance just a bit to allow for Roquet to come off her line. So a lot of subs on the field right now for both teams. Caitlin Zappé, Aaliyah Pace also entering the match for Florida State. 
Nimi Van Zin stole it away for a second. Mercado. There is Leah Pace, the Pitt transfer. Spent the last three years at Pitt. Echeguini, still running strong for Florida State. Three minutes to play in the first half. UI. Plenty of patience for Florida State as they look for the right opening. Is this it for Mimi Van Zanten? Nesbeth into too much Notre Dame traffic. I think one of the things that has separated both of these teams, Jen, throughout this year so far is that is their depth. Regardless of who's playing, who they're bringing on the field, the level stays high. Alspeck, we spoke about, could easily be a starter for Notre Dame, but she's coming off the bench. Happy to play that role because she knows that she can be significant in the later moments of, of each half. And the level continues to stay high with re with whoever is playing for each team. Yeah, I was just thinking that, how well Florida State has been pinging it around here, looking for an opportunity in front of goal. <laughs> Mimi Van Zin showing her stuff. Plenty of crowd cheering her on here on the road. As they have a Van Zin to cheer for in a Notre Dame <laughs> uniform as well. We're Van Zin fans as well. This I just wonderful. love the shirts are exactly. my favorite thing so far. You'll get to hear <laughs> mom, Priscilla, talk about those at halftime. Sorry, Mimi is the one at home. Kiki's the one on the road. Let me get that straight. Echigini unleashes. Oh, yeah. It's a brace for Joe Echigini with under a minute to play in the first half. She says, give me something more. Well, sometimes it's just about individual magic, getting on the ball, wanting it a little bit more. We talked about the level staying high. Look at that first touch for Echeguini through traffic. It's not the best ball into her feet. There's still work to be done. She takes it down so perfectly to be able to set herself up and then just sneaks it past the near post. The freshman Olofsson will want that one back to be beaten to that near post. But what a strike that is. And an she important had one late in this first half as well from Echeguini. It looked to me like Olafson had that near post covered. That's why I had to look close. I thought it might have caught the side of the net, but somehow, some way. But enough pace on it. She takes yeah. it really well. And I think she gets screened at the last second because it's through traffic. And that is something that Nate Norman and his team will be disappointed in. have done so well to get themselves back into this game and to concede, concede so late in the first 45 minutes of play, especially to a player of Echeguini's caliber through traffic, not getting tight enough defensively to stall that after that first touch. But well done from Florida State in their attack. 2-1 the lead for the Seminoles after that last gasp goal from Echeguini just before that first half whistle sounded in their watch. The whistle says, let's go for half number two. Still plenty to be decided in this one. And it was Florida State who started off on the front foot in the first half. Let's see if the second 45 looks any different. Kiki Van Zen back out there. Got to see her sister Mimi for Florida State toward the end of that first half. You heard from 
the Van Zanten family at halftime. Hopefully they're holding up all right. They're sitting right in front of us here in the press box. I'm have, we're going to have to go down and tell Priscilla how much we appreciate her <laughs> handiwork. It's got to be a little bit difficult, though, right, watching your kids face off? And exciting. I think this is what they've worked for. This is their entire life to get to, to this point to play college soccer. It would have been a lot of hard work, work put into this and to be able to celebrate it. I imagine that's what it's more like is a celebration of her two daughters. The hard work was ironing all the decals on, I think, that they did last <laughs> night. <laughs> With their other daughter, Brianna, who got into the fun, the older sister, celebrating her two younger sisters tonight. Little pressure there as Notre Dame trying to play out from the back. When you asked me, uh, Jen, what we what I felt like the conversation with Nate Norman was to his team at halftime, but for Brian Pinsky and Florida State, I think it'll be about these moments. How can they come out fast paced, control the game, but then not let up? How can you control the game through possession, create the tempo that you want at times that's going quickly, getting numbers going forward, and at times it's slowing down. As it's a decent idea from Jody Brown to be able to find Dudley in behind, a little lofted ball over the top, but can they push the pace? But then at times, can they just slow things down, keep possession, not allow for Notre Dame to get an equalizer, get themselves back in the game? Too many ebbs and flows, I would think, for Brian Pinsky's team and perspective. Sophia Wynn couldn't keep it for Florida State. That's a battle to watch there. Anytime Leah Klinke is anywhere near the ball for Notre Dame. Tops in the ACC and assists, picked up her ninth on the season on the goal earlier tonight. Echeguini time to turn at midfield, brings it down, finds Dudley. Dudley so smooth with the ball at her feet, looking Whoa. for the return favor for Echeguini. Well, you love that idea. The two of those players combining, we mentioned them coming into this game, how important they are. And it all starts with Echeguini bringing the ball down wonderfully, then finding Dudley on that far side, trying to get the return pass, just a bit too heavy in the end. But those two players linking up with one another, creating opportunities and havoc in the final third is exactly what you want if you're Florida State. Here they are again. Don't forget Jody Brown in there too. And Taylor Hoff. Oh, she unleashes a rocket. And it is handled by Olafson. <laughs> yeah, well, why not? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And this has to do with all of the attention from Echeguini and Dudley that opens up the space underneath for Huff to be able to get her head up, get that first touch under control, and then unleash a rocket from distance that forces Olofsson to bobble in the end. Recovers nicely, but those are the opportunities that Florida State's one gonna, going to want to continue to look for as this game wears on. Laura, I know you were talking on ACC PM earlier tonight before our match about this game, and you were saying how impressed you have been with, with Florida State in particular and what they've done this season. Well, I think it's difficult. Anytime you have a coaching change, especially of the caliber of Mark Krikorian and what he did for this program, the identity around this program of keeping possession, but the... The identity in terms of being a winning team, getting to the College Cup, winning national championships, as we're going to see Olsen on that far side try to create into the attack. But and anytime you have a coaching change, it's always difficult to maintain that status, but then also add a little flair to yourself. And they've done that, haven't yeah. they? Both last year and, and this year. Looking good. And, and Brian Pinsky really has done that. There's a directness about the way that they want to play, but then there's still that same identity of beating teams through combination, through getting more numbers higher up the field. Can anybody stop this freshman? No, they can't. <laughs> it's going to take at least two defenders. Do not go one-on-one -on -one with Jordan Dudley. You might be able to slow her down, but you really cannot stop Jordan Dudley. She is going to create chances. Whether or not she finds the back of the net every game is a another question, but she's going to draw attention. That's going to allow for other players to be free. 
and she's such a past in a new sense with her movement, her athleticism, but also her skill. Great first touch to set herself up, but also just the understanding and reading of the game where the space is. I'm a little frustrated with myself. I, I feel like I've, I've let our team down when it comes to Jordan Dudley because she has been playing pretty much in my backyard in Georgia, and I never knew. Should have gone and seen this player in high school if I knew what was coming. Played at Cambridge High School, Milton, Georgia. Well, we blame you. Yeah, you should. <laughs> Four-time All-State. What was I doing? Not paying attention. <laughs> also a really good basketball player. You can see she's got some good height. 5'11 is the freshman. I think she picked the right sport, though. Still, Brooke Wyckoff might be trying to poach from the soccer team. If Dudley is anything on the basketball court like she's been on the soccer field so far. Roque, a little busier in that first half than usual. Four yeah, saves handball. in the first half tonight as the handball is called here. Those four already a season high, by the way, for a game. She only has 12 on the season <laughs> overall. It's hard to believe, but it just speaks to, to Florida State defensively and a lot of that with their attack, getting numbers forward, putting the opposition under pressure and don't have to deal with a lot of teams on the defensive side. Dudley. This ball deflects a little bit, but Olafson has it. Allie Olafson, this has been a change for Notre Dame in goal. She didn't start the season between the pipes for the Irish. That was senior Ashley Naylor. Mackenzie Wood, the goalkeeper last year, but she moved on, and so that left an opening. Olafson has earned the spot. Now her fifth start of the season tonight. And what a test on the road at Florida State. Mercado one of the best offensive weapons Maddie Mercado number three for Notre Dame has been in a fairly defensive position it feels like much of this match and if they can get her on the ball more often and then higher up the field she's one of those players that can cause a lot of problems defensively for Florida State. But just on that last challenge, you see the importance of Huff. At times, she'll drop back next to Nesbeth in those central areas just to provide a little bit more balance in the midfield, but also cover that back line. And that's one of the reasons why we've seen Mercado be quite quiet throughout this game so far. Two of the top teams, not only in the ACC, but in the country this season. Florida State unbeaten on the year, 10-0-1 overall. Notre Dame just one loss. They're 9-1-3, that one loss coming against Michigan in September. Brown on the turn. Has EY up into the attack. And just pay attention on the wings. This will be a goal kick, but look at how often you see EY on this side win on the other side for Florida State getting into advanced positions. How many times is that happening the other way for Notre Dame? Clinky, yes. Roy has been a lot more limited. And it certainly has. And it goes back to the point we were making about being a bit more patient in the final third for Florida State. Can they move the ball side to side? You can see that they're looking for that final pass frequently, and then they just let Notre Dame off the hook defensively. Can they keep moving it, switching the point, looking for a better option, and those overloads in the wide areas, I think they can be even more dangerous in the attack, Florida State. Ellie Osbeck back into the match for Notre Dame, number five replacing Meg Marowicki up top. And she is essentially a starter in the minutes that she plays in the impact and value that she has for this team. So 
I've seen her minutes continue to creep up. And will she be a difference maker, the reigning ACC Offensive Player of the Week? Lauren Flynn does such a good job of just holding things down in that back line for Florida State. Well, we haven't talked about it at all throughout this game, but a little bit of a switch. And it's the little things for both of these teams that have allowed them to get to this point in the season where they are undefeated in conference play. But we have seen F Flynn and Gilcrest switch sides. Flynn opens up, can play with her left foot out of the back. And just a bit more of a comfortable position playing on the left side as a center back comparatively to Gilcrest. And with Gilcrest making her way back into the lineup does provide a bit more security as well. The two of them with a really good partnership. Just the nuances of both of these teams. Notre Dame looking to build out of their own half. Kiki Van Zanten onto the ball. Some pressure on Gatino as Dudley takes it away from the ACC Defender of the Year. Dudley! No, denied on the doorstep. Well, we talk so much about her work on the offensive side. Defensively, though, she puts herself in excellent positions, just picks the pocket right here of Notre Dame and then just off and running. Felt maybe she could take one more touch to set herself up even better just doesn't get a hold of it cleanly, it allows for Olofsson to get down, make the save, and then a number of players to recover for Notre Dame defensively to send that one out for a corner kick. But all the work from Dudley on both sides of the ball to create this opportunity. Just the second corner of the match for Florida State. Headed back down right where you want it. Now the follow-up from Flynn is blocked. Can Notre Dame break out? Seminoles have it covered. Huff, one quick touch back to Echigini. Oh, across! And I'm not so sure Olsen knew that ball was going to come first time from Echigini, but what an excellent little combination play. How quickly starts with Huff. That's Nesbeth. You're holding mid, getting higher up the field because of the time in possession, and then a one-time ball from Echigini trying to find the head of Olsen. Excellent buildup and just showing the class of Florida State in the attack, and they continue to put Notre Dame under pressure. We have not seen Notre Dame get out of their defensive half throughout this first 10 minutes, 15 minutes of this second half so far. All the credit to Florida State and the combination and the pressure they put them under. Now, that being said, Notre Dame did score against no doubt. the run yep. of play in the first half, so they know they can create, but yeah, I think they would much rather have that territorial battle pushed much further up the field. Well, we also been. know, Jen, that possession doesn't tell the whole story. You could have all of the possession and not really create clear opportunities. We said it in the first half for Florida State. The one thing that Brian Pinsky would have been upset with if it would have been tied going into halftime was the fact that they didn't finish some of their chances. Same story this second half. Can they create, but can they be even more lethal? Dudley with the opportunity, Echigini as well. Now can they find the back of the net? Because that's going to be key to put this game away and really force Notre Dame to come out of their, their defensive posture as this game wears on. EY left it a little behind Jody Brown. Van Zanten right in front of her cheering section, section, excuse me. Brown will go all the way back to Christina Roque. Olsen, a bit heavy on the first touch, but breaks herself out of trouble. Nesbeth. 
And I like the positioning of Olsen. We talked about her typically playing center forward, now playing out wide right. It does give her the ability to roam, find the game there. She is defensively working back. We saw that a few times in the first half as well. Creates the turnover. She is in a deeper position in that last opportunity, but it does give her more of the freedom to find the ball than in that center forward position. And that's something that Brian Pinsky told us about. Dudley. Too strong. And well, also the switch in position allows Dudley to get closer to goal, exactly where the Seminoles want her to be. It's the amount of pressure they put teams under in the movement of the front five. Yes, it can score goals, but it's the movement off the ball that creates so much disruption for defenses. Who's tracking? The communication has to be spot on. It has been all Florida State really since that Echigini goal just before halftime and certainly since the second half has started. No additional goals added to the tally. But Notre Dame having a really difficult time finding their way into this match. Goal early, a goal late in the first half for Echigini. Lynch tying it up at least for a few minutes in the first half for Notre Dame. Clinky, back to Van Zanten. That's Riano. Yeah, that's a good ball just to open up some space for Notre Dame. When you said it earlier, get Clinky an opportunity to serve yep. because good things happen. And that time she got it by going away from it first and then getting it back. Now there's a corner. Well, and she's incisive with her movement as well. As soon as she gets the ball, she's direct with her play, knows exactly what she wants to do, draws fouls, draws corner kicks. And this could be the best opportunity so far right now for Notre Dame in the second half. Just the second corner for the Irish. Uncharacteristically low corner kick numbers. Will one of them count? Roque takes any hope away on that service. You know, it's not all that often that your outside backs draw oohs and ahs in good ways from the crowd, <laughs> but Ron Ewy has done that a couple of times now. <laughs> She's attacking outside back. <laughs> Wants to get forward, shows a little bit of flair herself. Had two assists, tied a career high against Boston College in that 6 nothing victory for Florida State. By the way, tonight was just the second time that Florida State has led at the half in ACC play. As Brian Penske told us earlier, most of our games have been decided late. They have really had to fight their way through some difficulties to get to where they are. Number one in the country right now and possibly standing alone as number one in the ACC if they can hang on to this result tonight. Well, I liked his response when we asked why that was the case. He goes, I don't know. <laughs> Fair enough. You're still winning games, still scoring goals, so not sure you have to have that figured out. And then you've got a number like that to give you some confidence in what your team is doing after halftime, outscoring opponents 25 to three. Huff has chance to take her shot. Skims over the crossbar. Well, this is exactly what I was talking about coming into this second half for Florida State. Can they manage the game, manage the tempo in the way that gives them complete control? We've seen that so far this time, Huff. That doesn't miss by much. She's taken a few good looks from distance, but all of that starts with just possession, being a bit more methodical in their buildup and when they are in the final third. And right now is where the moments that Notre Dame has to push the pace find a bit more in the way of the attack for themselves. Clinky can do that with her left foot. This ball stays in play. Morgan Roy tracks it down. A rare opportunity for the freshman to get into the attack where she'd like to be a lot more often. Gatino. Osbeck. She and Lynch 
a little too close for comfort, but Lynch still with it on her foot, had the goal in the first half, and that deflects out of bounds for another corner for the Irish. Well, I was gonna say the better option was for her to play Klinky, who was wide open out far, out left in the wide area, but Obstacle herself does draw the corner kick, and sometimes when you don't have the better of the play, these are the moments with Gatino as the target off of these set pieces, getting her involved, getting her surrounded so she can get on the end of some of these services. You can see Notre Dame has been proficient from the corner this season. Gatino off in the one doing the damage. This service sent over her head. Dudley good in the air on both sides of the field. Puts this out for a throw in. She may need a minute though. And now the referee will stop to go check on Dudley. That is certainly a concerning image for Florida State fans. Just looked a bit awkward as she made that clearance to get the ball out of bounds, but now back to her feet, so that's a good thing. Yeah, just a, a tough challenge. There's a little nudge in the back as she's trying to keep that ball into play, not allow it out for a corner kick, and the work that she puts in, my goodness. I mean, look at the work that she had to do just in that moment there, which maybe a lot of people would think, I just got pushed, there's not much I can do, but she makes that difficult half volley to get it yeah, out for so a throw. Yeah, and that's what wins you championships. It doesn't look like much in the run of play, but to keep that from going out for a corner kick, to not allow Notre Dame a good look. They have to take the throw in instead. We're gonna see some substitutions, but it's the littlest details that separate teams. And, and we are seeing that here tonight because this is a quality Notre Dame side. And so a good response for them after conceding the early goal in the first half. Now can we see if they have a little bit more momentum in the way of the attack for the fire, fighting Irish in the second half. Trio of subs coming on there for Florida State. Caitlin Zappé, Leah Pace, and Mimi Van Zanten, younger sister of Kiki Van Zanten. So the two Van Zanten sisters on the field together for the first time tonight. They both played in the first half, but Mimi came on when Kiki went off. Echigini, a brace on the night, looking for the pit transfer. Leah Pace, it goes past her, out wide to Mimi Van Zanten. Zippe. Still a chance for a shot. It takes an unlucky Irish bounce and Florida State tacks on one more. Well, you certainly felt it coming from the Seminoles because they've had the better of the play, the control of this game throughout this second half, whether it's through possession, direct play, get it out wide, are patient in the build, and then look at the amount of space to be able to unleash that opportunity, and then Brown in a perfect place just to take the deflection. Bit unlucky for Notre Dame, but no pressure on the ball, and they've been pushed back defensively so much in this second half. That is a deserved goal, regardless if there's a deflection or not from the Seminoles, and to create a little bit of separation in the score line here at home for them. I like how it just looked and felt so casual for Jody Brown. Just your easy everyday touch. She's like, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. And goal number four, let's go. I think go. she was trying to get out of the way, actually. <laughs> <laughs> just worked out in her favor. <laughs> That's when you know things are going your yeah. way. I'm getting out of the way, but I'll score a goal too. <laughs> Nate Norman just picks up a yellow card on the sideline for Notre Dame. Can feel this is a pivotal moment for his team. And as you said, Florida State able to gain a little extra ground comfort with the cushion of two goals now. Clearly, Nate Norman feeling like there were some pushes that weren't being called, but has to be careful here after he was already shown the yellow. So Corey Rockwell over to talk things over. And 
Yeah, and I think one of the things that Nate Norman might be off, uh, or upset about is potentially Jody Brown being in an offside position. I was questioning that, but you can see on this replay here, actually does such a good job with her mo movement. You're gonna see on the other end, just an easy save for Roque as she goes to ground, smothers it. You can see why he might have thought that, yeah, right? Certainly. In real because time. Exactly. And, and that was a question of mine as well. But then you, clearly in that replay, Jody Brown keeping an eye on where the defenders were, staying in line with them, clearly on side in the end. And a tough one to give away regardless. And that's a couple times, though. Not good enough pressure on the ball initially for Notre Dame. This is going to be another big challenge in the center of the field. And a little bit of conversation between the two players of Gatino and Jody Brown. Emotions running high. And now we are going to have a review as Corey Rockwell is going to go look at the monitor, perhaps at that last interaction between the two players. So don't believe anything was called, at least not that we were told on the field. Perhaps looking to see if there was violent behavior, but there was no, there was no card that was shown on the original play. But contact to the face often could count as that violent behavior that you're looking for. And it's difficult to see from that replay, and it would have been between Dudley and Gatino. But I think this is smart on the on the part of our referee because he could sense emotions were boiling yep. over for both sides. If he thought there was any chance of a potential contact to the face, He's going to show both teams, hey, I'm going to go look at it to make sure we're going to cut this out if it is happening. And then get, make sure that he has control of the game so it doesn't continue emotions to continue to be heightened in these moments. I don't see anything. Yeah, and I was actually keeping an eye on, on Jody Brown as yeah. well in between. And it's just a, a bit of some physical play. Doesn't look, you see a little bit of a push in the back there from Jody Brown, but... I don't see anything between Dudley and Gatino initially. Here's the, the physical play between those two in the midfield, and there's nothing in that no. in there as well. Corey Rockwell agrees, nothing extra in that, but again, I think that was a really good move on his part to look at it if he had any question. And an ample opportunity for both teams as well to be able just to regain a bit of composure, but also just regain their ability to get themselves back into the game from a Notre Dame perspective. And then for Florida State, how do you keep this lead? Make sure they get numbers back behind the ball. Don't allow it to get stretched and leave themselves exposed because now Notre Dame has to come out of their defensive posture. So we're gonna see Mercado draw a foul and Nate Norman still not happy on that sideline for Notre Dame. But listen, Jen, these are the moments, and we're going to see a yellow card, it looks like, from Corey Rockwell. Or at least the threat of it. He's got it out. And he... <laughs> we'll confirm... Now that that was on Jordan Dudley, the yellow card. Well, in one perspective for Florida State, is we're going to see who that yellow card was on. And there's Mercado. There's a little tug in the end. And again, not much, but all the disruption, all the emotion plays right into Florida State's hands because they can slow the game down, allow for the clock to tick down. And it's Notre Dame that has to keep it in play, continue to chase. Maria Alagoa coming on in place of Dudley. And maybe Brian Penske just giving his freshman a chance to cool off a little bit. Nesbitt. 
both of these teams have come back from deficits to win in the conference season. Now, a two-goal deficit is a different animal, but Notre Dame came all the way back. They were trailing Duke and wound up scoring the 86th and 87th minutes of that match to win it 2-1. Really a heartbreaking result from a Blue Devil perspective, but one that brought with it a lot of confidence for this Notre Dame team that they could find their way back into a match. Can they do it tonight on the road against number one? Right now, it may be about keeping your composure, particularly if you are Florida State. Got the advantage. Lily Farkas, transfer from Michigan, joining the Seminoles this year. He's a grad transfer, spent the last four years with the Wolverines. Well, there's still plenty of time left in this game, but tactically, I feel like Florida State, Brian Pinsky got this game right, knowing that Notre Dame was gonna come out in a three back. At times, they employed a four, a front four for Florida State, really pushing that back three back, but also forcing one of the wide backs or wing backs for Notre Dame to sit on that back line, takes another number out of the attack for them. And the defensive posture so far is what's cost them in the way of trying to create into the attack, not allowing a lot of numbers to get forward for Notre Dame that we're typically used to seeing and spot on for Brian Pinsky and his, his coaching staff. Yeah, because when you get to this level, this caliber of matchup, just having the talented players isn't enough. You need to get the tactics right too. Seminoles have shown they're very proficient at both tonight. Nesbeth couldn't get all of that one on her foot. It's a wicked carom off to the right. Yeah, Chagini took some contact on the last play. Limping a bit back into the center of things. For a lot of miles as we are gonna see a yellow card. So initially the advantage was allowed after that play. I think that's what happened. So Corey Rockwell is going back to say, yes, it was an offense that I believe is a yellow card. And now he's going to go look at this one. So advantage initially was allowed to play on. He went back to the play where Echeguini was fouled. That's when the yellow was issued. When I think about at this point in time, just some frustration has set in for Notre Dame. It's been difficult for them to be able to get a hold of the ball, be able to gain some control in this game at Chagini been at the heart of the attack there's a late challenge and again there's not an intent in there and then the second challenge with a, a stiff forearm but Roy trying to double back help out defensively as Echeguini gets back and yes, is it the first or the second yeah, that's the yellow card honestly I've not seen a yellow card in that I understand that Corey Rockwell wants to keep control of this game you have mm, a few tough first. challenges but yeah I'm thinking it's the first and again there's no intent in that. It's just a late challenge that could be dangerous in the end. I think that yellow card stands and it would be on Logan in my opinion. Player identification in disciplinary instances, one of the other things that you are allowed to look at for replay review. So. That's exactly what they're trying to get the clarification on. Actually, Laney Matriano was the player who come over to help defensively. And she picks up the yellow card on that. It was hard to see. I was with you thinking it was the freshman Logan who had come over defensively. But anyway, Matriano is the one booked. This match has gotten very choppy over the last eight, 10 minutes. Fouls, replay reviews, yellow cards, all a part of the mix, but it's been Florida State's night so far.
and do things start to change now for Notre Dame if they have to be wary as this match has gone on of how much they press and push numbers forward. And Chagini sent out a hat trick, stopped in her tracks. Huge save from Olofsson when they need it most. Just a bit of confidence to keep themselves in this game the last 15, 16 minutes. But it's a great ball over the top just to put Logan, the freshman, under some pressure. She's too slow to react. Echigini pounces on it, has a wide open opportunity. Olofsson, though, does well to come off her line, cut down the angle, make it as big as possible. And I think Echigini will want that one back because typically with the caliber of player that she is, that is in the back of the net to really put this game out of reach once again a big save from the freshman goalkeeper for Notre Dame and you mentioned the stoppage in play Jen and it's really caused some disruption to the attack for Notre Dame haven't been able to connect their passes when they do get a bit higher up the field and it's Florida State that's creating the turnovers and continuing to find ways to get themselves in and around the box to create chances just one shot in the second half for Notre Dame compared to seven for Florida State. But that was a save that I think illustrates why Olafson yep. has earned this spot. She had an excellent high school career, set a school record at Westwood High School in Texas with no goals against it an entire season. So she came in very highly touted has earned the spot and Nate Norman told us she will make some saves that will keep us in games we're going to need her to make and look if that goal is scored from Echigini that's a start the buses kind of goal that's a get out of here this one is over if you're Notre Dame so can they take advantage of that with some momentum going the other direction well and also that gives you the confidence and maybe not in this game but deeper in the postseason play for her to have the confidence to come up big make those game winning saves as there's another attack for Florida State Farkas on her right foot through a lot of traffic Alagoa comes in late but cannot get it on target or it's those moments in postseason play when Notre Dame's chasing the game and need to push numbers forward they know that they have Olofsson behind them that can come up big again it's the littlest things and we talked about this game highlighting areas that you need to improve upon as it gets later in the season and those are the the things that could be highlighted as it gets down to the nitty-gritty and important parts There is no doubt bright futures await in terms of the remainder of the regular season, the postseason for both of these teams. How far will they go? Remember, Notre Dame, a win away from the College Cup. They were eliminated at the quarterfinals of the NCAA tournament by North Carolina last year. Florida State! Oh! no doubt could be one of the goals of the year in conference play because Nesmith gets all of this ball. Look at the loads of green in front of her. No one steps to her. She goes, thank you very much. I'll go myself. I'll take control of this entire ball and just unleashes that shot from distance. And what a goal that is to put this game out of reach. You can see the dip, the swerve. That is your holding mid. And I was just about to make the point that they have had complete control in the midfield setting the tempo allows for Nesbeth to get higher up the field and then my goodness what a strike that is from the veteran leader for Florida State look Leilani I'm not thinking you're gonna unleash a shot that's why I'm into well, a story at that point <laughs> but I well, guess Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah. she saw an opening and it was enough she <laughs> has been everywhere I don't maybe you give her player the match I know Echigini had the brace but she has been playing so many different roles so well and when Florida State needed to flex their muscle and regain control of this match she did it well and this is certainly a statement game for Florida State because they had to weather a little bit of the storm when Notre Dame got themselves back into this game they stayed calm they got the late goal when they needed it most and this entire second half has been all Florida State you have players moving Pace being a critical part, I was just about to mention how important she is because she can fill that role for Nesbeth and allow her to get higher up the field. They have two similar players with Pace coming off the bench. 
And Nesbeth wants to get higher up at times, and that's why, because she can shoot from distance. When she gets a hold of it, there's no one stopping that one. Not even Olofsson, who we were just singing her praises is how good she is in terms of a shot stopper. And remember, Nesbeth used to be more of an attacking player. It's been an evolution throughout her career here at Florida State that she's dropped into that more of a defensive role in the midfield, but come on. That striker, that attacking mentality, it never leaves you, does it? Well, some of these goals you just want to watch over and over again because look at the space, first of all. That's something that Notre Dame won't be happy with. It's just too easy to get into the attack, especially with a player of her caliber with the amount of touches she has and then just gets all of that ball dipping, swerving. Olsen has no chance in the end. Thank you very much, and my goodness, four goals on the night for Florida State. What a performance here at home. It'll be a real learning curve for Notre Dame, and the tests do not get any easier after this one. Going on the road to North Carolina, the team that was number one before Florida State took over that number one spot. We'll have that for you in our Thursday night primetime matchup next Thursday. It's at 8 p.m. Eastern. Another shot taken. It took an acrobatic save from Olafson. Keep it out of the goal. Well, right now, Notre Dame just needs to continue to fight for their life because you can see how deflated they are, just retreating defensively even more, not getting pressure on the ball. Waves of attack for Florida State. So just a bit of confidence, whether it's getting control of the ball, creating a little bit of possession, defensively staying connected as a unit, getting stuck in tackle-wise. But I think one thing to remember, Jen, is you and I talked about it before coming into this game, was this was a statement game last year for Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. A 4-0 win at home versus Florida State. Turning point for Florida State because they said, listen, is this what we want to be about? No, it's not. And then that changed the course of their season. Well, this could be that for Notre Dame. Knowing that they came in here, have been outplayed, go to North Carolina, away from home next week, and gonna have to put on a different show because that's not the result you're gonna want two, week, two weeks in a row. Could be the two most defining weeks of the season for Notre Dame. Certainly their two biggest challenges. Well, Saturday afternoon at a special time of 2 Eastern, the ACC Huddle Crew will kick off the afternoon at Wallace Wade Stadium in Durham with a 90-minute pregame show, leading into Wake Forest and Virginia Tech at 3.30. Then they're back to wrap up the afternoon with highlights and analysis and to get you set for NC State Duke at 8. Florida State very much up for the challenge tonight on their home field. Looking to keep that record of perfection intact when hosting an opponent as the number one ranked team and also that incredible number <laughs> that they have not lost a match that they have led at halftime since 2010. shots in the match for Florida State. They have outshot Notre Dame in the second half alone. Just seven total shots for the Irish on the night compared to 11 in the second half for the Seminoles. They've been a little bit of everything, haven't they? They've, they've showed how they can strike quickly, scoring in the eighth minute. They've shown patience and poise in the attacking third. They've been tough to beat defensively. They look like number one. Yeah, they certainly do. And they have a lethal attack that works hard on both sides of the ball. So defensively, they're always, or most of the time, in such good positions to regain possession. That's so difficult to play against because they do send numbers forward. Mimi Van Zanten. Freshman who's just gotten 
back onto the field after an ACL injury last fall. Number 14 for the Seminoles. Made her debut September 21st at Syracuse and scored her first and second goals as a Seminole 90 seconds apart in that 6-0 victory over Boston College in the last match. I think you're so spot on, though, thinking back to that this matchup in the regular season last year and, and what it did for both teams. Notre Dame went on to have a great season where they could have won the ACC regular season title, at least a share of it, but they wound up not able to get the victory in their final match against Duke. So they wound up finishing third and Florida State rebounded from that four nothing loss and came back stronger, won the ACC tournament championship and made another deep run to their third straight College Cup. Yeah, there's sometimes something that we call short-term memory, putting this behind you. Learn from it if you're in Notre Dame, but don't dwell on it. Quick turnaround, big game at UNC next week, and we'll want to find those moments because this is such a quality team as we're going to see Nate Norman and his coaching staff just trying to figure out a few things these last five minutes or so, but they have the talent it's about getting the most out of them, but all the credit to Florida State because they came out in the first minutes of this game front-footed, ready to play this matchup, and they didn't look back. And even when it looked a little hairy with Notre Dame getting that tying goal, stayed calm, stayed composed, got an important goal late in that first 45 that changed the directory of this game. Under five minutes to play in this, the only ACC women's soccer match of the night. Not bad for a standalone, though. <laughs> well, six goals last game, this these two teams. There's still time to get that six goal, but five right now. So always a lot in the way of the attack for both teams. And defensively, too, we mentioned that you know, Florida State had three straight shutouts coming into this match. and. Notre Dame did make the defense and Christina Roque work a little harder than they have had to here as of late. <laughs> Olivia Garcia into the match for the Seminoles. Brian Penske able to get more of his players some time now in these waning moments of the match. Leah Pace tripped up, but the shot oh, bounces just a bit wide. And I mean, how good has Pace been? This is a player that's not even starting right now for the Seminoles, but coming in, we talked about her positioning at times next to Nesbeth can play that role that pushes Nesbeth a bit higher up the field, or the two of them can play a dual six role gives him more coverage defensively and moving the ball quickly fits right into the identity of the Seminoles team. Foul against Florida State will give it back to Notre Dame. Maggie Titano, freshman who's been able to come in and give Nesbeth a bit of a break when needed at that holding midfield spot. Chase Ying into the match, receives it here for Notre Dame. Audrey Weiss. Gilchrist back at that center back position for Florida State after missing the last two matches. Defense didn't miss a beat though. And we started this match, Lori, talking about the fact that great programs do just that on a bigger scale, that they might lose a lot of production, a lot of big time players, but they figure out a way to reload without letting you know that they're reloading. And both of these teams really have done that this year. Well, we've seen that for sure from Florida State. Maybe not the best performance from Notre Dame. Didn't see enough of Van Zanten and Mercado 
to take a hold of the game for the Fighting Irish. She's going to look for a last opportunity. Has potentially earned themselves. That's clinky. A, a corner kick on that far side, but she's been a bright spot for the fire, Fighting Irish away from home tonight. But Van Zant and Mercado, those two players that typically have been the conductors in those central areas, just not enough. And that's where the game came down to is the midfield battle and Florida State certainly won it tonight. Nothing doing there for the Irish. So you can bet Florida State will take their time putting this goal kick back in play. There will be a Standalone number one in the ACC after this result tonight. Florida State and Notre Dame both came in tied at the top, but it will be the Seminoles standing alone after a very impressive performance tonight. Final few seconds ticking away here from the Seminole Soccer Complex. And you've seen a little bit of all that Florida State has to offer on display, including some great depth. Players who've come off the bench, you mentioned Leah Pace, such a nice addition for this team. Level not really dropping too much as they've gone to their bench and they can celebrate a really impressive performance tonight. Florida State as this one goes final, staying perfectly unbeaten in the ACC. Well, big win as we see the two coaches meet at the halfway line. Big win for Brian.